King of my heart, Jesus is here. Hey folks, this is Pastor Larry with Freedom Ministries. Thanks for joining me today. Hope that you're on Facebook Live or maybe you're tuning in to the podcast with me at podcastwithpastorlarry.com or whatever podcast platform you use. So glad that you're here today. We are studying together how to grow a deeper faith and a closer relationship with God, as a Christian, if you know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have put your faith and trust in Christ and the finished work of Calvary. If you've done that, are you growing as a Christian? Have you grown lately? Are you growing in a closer relationship with him? Are you seeing victory in your life? Are are there certain aspects of your life that you can look back on and track spiritual growth in your life? You should be able to. And after all, this is the goal that God wants for you and I. He wants you and I to grow closer with him. We do that in a few ways. One is by being in his word daily. Yes, that means we're spending time with God, learning about Him, learning about ourselves, learning what His purpose and His plan for us through His Word, but also through prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is simply talking to God. We're just talking to God. That's what prayer is. We're having communication with God. Yes, we hear from him through his word, but we are talking to him. He's hearing from us through our prayer time. And what a special moment those are, right? You can pray as the Bible says, Paul said, pray without ceasing. You don't even have to close your eyes. You don't even have to go in a closet You can be praying, consciously thinking and talking with God all day long. And if you're like me, and if we would admit this, we need that conversation, don't we? You know, don't you find yourself talking to yourself? And we all do it. Sometimes we have idle conversation with others, and that's wonderful, and those things are great. But nothing is more important for the believer than having special moments and time that we're talking with God, sharing our joys and our frustration, things that we are desiring and needing and that we're wanting to come into agreement with according to his word, lining up spiritually. So when we find things in God's word that maybe we aren't obeying, or that we're not doing, that he has asked us or has commanded us to do. Boy, prayer is an opportunity for us to be open and honest with God. And I hope that you're experiencing that. And that's what this study is for. Not everybody is at the same place spiritually, of course, but there are signs of spiritual growth, right? Ways or that are indicators whether we are growing or not. In this part of the study, we have been covering stages. There's going to be seven of them. We're going to get to number five today and cover that, maybe number six. But there have been five or there are seven stages that we're going to cover that talk about growth towards intimacy with God. The first one was unbelief. If you have missed any part of these, you can go back on Facebook and watch this video part of the series, um, or you can go back to the podcast, and they're in order, and listen to those as well. I think this is episode 22, if I'm not mistaken, but you can go back and pick up and get these 
teachings and these thoughts together in your life if you've missed any part of it. The second stage was salvation. Most certainly, we want to leave the first stage quickly. We do not want to be left in our unbelief. God has paid a price that we could not pay. The bill, the payment for sin, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, for the wages of sin is death. There is a something that we've earned. That's a wage. The wages of sin is spiritual death. That's a bill we couldn't pay. We sure couldn't earn it on our own. So God, through his son, Jesus Christ, he sent his only begotten son so that we wouldn't perish. We have a receipt. What is the receipt? The receipt is paid in full. And that is the cross work of Jesus Christ. That's salvation. I most certainly hope that we all have started out at stage number one in unbelief. But I trust and pray. My heart for you is that you are at least at stage number two. But we don't want to leave off there either. We want to grow. That brings me to the third stage, which was service, serving the Lord. Serving others is serving God. And I most certainly hope that you have found your gifts and talents and spiritual gifts and that you understand what they are for you and that you are applying those. You are living those out in the way that you live for your Savior. The fourth one that we talked about last time was frustrated through inadequacy. Yeah, we all have been there. We all can feel this and sense this in our Christian walk in life. And that is, there are times in our life where we're very frustrated, yes, even as born-again believers, even as Christians. We're frustrated in life's curveballs, disappointments, trials, tribulations, suffering, pain, but also maybe not fully understanding what it is that God wants us to do. How does he want us to live? And God's word has answers for all of that. He provides hope. He provides encouragement. And he also provides joy and peace. Yes, my friend, the peace that passes all understanding. And so you being frustrated, even in your Christian life, I want you to know that's normal. And most Christians experience that. Let's get to stage number five today. And that is spiritual dependency. That's right. Spiritual dependency. If we're going to press forward here in our faith, and if we're going to continue to trust God, and we should, even though we may be have coming or are still in stage four, of feeling frustrated and realizing our own inadequacy we we in our own strength is weak right but where we're weak the bible says god is strong the lord will bring us to a place where we can find our own insufficiency and that's a good thing but that we find our sufficiency in christ In other words, are you fully depending on Christ to live this Christ life? This is an exchange life here. And Christ in you, Paul said, the hope of glory. Paul said, for me to live is Christ. And where we are resting and abiding, Jesus said, abide, remain, rest in my love. What does he mean? We're going to stay put there. This is the place we are going to be constant. We're constant and need to remain on spiritual dependency of Christ. Here's the thought. When we reach the end of our own ability, and that is good, and we reach the end of our own effort, and that should come quickly, What do we find? We find that God is able, he's more than able to work in us and through us 
in ways we never thought imaginable. For his ways, God's ways, are not our ways. For with God, nothing is impossible. When it comes to us living victoriously, and God equipping and empowering us to live for him, what do we find? We find that we become totally dependent. This is where this stage number five is so key. We become totally dependent upon the Holy Spirit for spiritual guidance. Yes, praying over everything, in everything, give thanks, right? Wait a minute. I have been sick. My loved one is sick. My loved one is has passed my I, I I've gone through a difficult time there's been a struggle yes even in those give thanks there are things that we can find to give thanks God is still good regardless of our circumstance he has been good to you and to me and we find that we can when we okay get to the point that we are insufficient in ourselves and realize Christ is everything. He's our everything. We can find direction. We can find encouragement. And our spiritual walk is more enjoyable and our work is more effective when we come to the end of ourselves and are totally dependent on Christ. You know, we live in a world, and it is in our nature, isn't it? To be independent. We love that. You know, it starts out at infancy, doesn't it? Babies want to start not being held. They want to start crawling. And yes, they still put up their hands and want their mom or dad or loved one or whoever to pick them up, but then they start crawling, then they start walking, and they don't want you holding their hand. They want to do it on their own. What are they doing? They want dependent their own dependency. They want to be independent. And then they go from the crib to the playground, then they uh, playpen, and then they leave the playpen, and they want to play in their yard. And the independency is starting to grow. And what we find is that we go from the playpen to the yard to the neighborhood. Then we're now on our own driving and we want to go to our own places. And you start to see the progression. We learn this early. What is it developing? Not all bad things. We are just wanting to be independent. Then we can't wait to move out of mom and dad's house. We can't wait to turn 18 and become an adult and make our own decisions. And and age and laws have a lot to do with that, that kind of conform us and mold us into that thought. But we take that thought that isn't healthy when it comes to spiritual things, and we try to appropriate that and apply that when it comes to us living the Christ life. We have those tendencies to want to still live independent even with God. And that's not good. See, at this stage of this growth of spiritual dependency, we are actively choosing to be filled with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. It probably should be a moment-by-moment basis. That would probably be a better, accurate statement, wouldn't it? Yes, we choose to do this. I choose to allow Christ to work in and through me. I desire for him to do that. That must be the choice that each of us make. And... Can't we quickly get to where we're not allowing that? That's why the Bible says quench not the spirit, because we can. The Bible wouldn't say quench not the spirit of God if there was no chance of us not being able to do it. But we can, because we have free will. We have volition, which means every one of us can make decisions on our own. That is good. But it also can be bad 
if it's the wrong decision. Now, the Holy Spirit, yes, indwells the person and comes to abide and reside in the individual the moment that they trust Christ as their Savior. The moment that a person puts their faith and trust in God, um, they are filled, okay, with the Spirit, but there has to be a daily awareness of that feeling up of the Spirit of Christ, of His presence in our life. And we've, we've got to recognize our lack or inability, if you will, of doing this on our own. We can't live the Christian life without Christ. That makes sense, doesn't it? And once we become saved, there must be a reliance upon Christ in us. Yes, you can refuse that. You are not a robot. God didn't make you a robot. You have a will. But it is an act of our will to want to be led and spiritually dependent upon Christ in us. Like a prayer that you could pray, and we should all pray. Not, Lord, be with me, because the Lord is with you. He doesn't separate you from you as a believer. So you praying, Lord, be with me, isn't actually on point now, is it? Because it doesn't make sense. You're asking for something that's already done. Maybe the prayer should be fashioned and formed and grown a little bit to say, Lord, fill me today. Use me today. Lord, remind me when I am not reliant upon you. I need to be totally reliant and dependent upon you. So, Lord, fill me. Use me. Work through me. Because, Lord, you are with me. And it's an awareness. I'm choosing to allow the Lord to work through me. May your will, God, be totally and completely, may I be submitted completely to your ways, Lord, to your work, Lord, to what you desire for me today. Now, that is a prayer that is most needful in our life. What are we acknowledging? Lord, today I'm very capable without you messing it up. I am absolutely capable today without your filling, without your empowerment of not being very Christ-like today. Absolutely. That's why these prayers, and that is why this stage, number five of being spiritually dependent, is so needed. We're asking the Lord We are not wanting to do it our way. We're not wanting our will. We're wanting your will for our life. So, Lord, work through me today. I hope you've reached this stage in your life where you are submitting daily all of your life. You you are today. No man's promise tomorrow, so... When tomorrow gets here, this is the thought. I can't redo yesterday, but I have this moment. And so today, Lord, I need and I recognize I need to be totally dependent upon you. What does the Word of God say about spiritual dependency? Let's look at it together for a few moments. The first one comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And not that we are sufficient of ourselves to take credit for anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. What a great verse. Verse 6 of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Who has made us ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, 
but of the Spirit. So not according to the old covenant, but the new covenant, Christ in us, right? For the letter kills, the law only shows our guilt, but doesn't rescue us. But the Spirit, Paul said, gives life. What is this acknowledgement of? Our dependency is of Christ. And without that, we are totally, absolutely able to be self-destructive. There's another great verse, and it comes from Acts 17, verse 28. For in him, for in Christ, we live and move and have our being. This looks so much like Galatians 2.20. For for me to live is Christ. Paul says absolutely the same thing. My being, my life, my everything is Christ. And I hope you feel that way today. There's another great verse that comes from the book of Acts. It comes from Acts chapter 4, verse 31. When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken Men, God, through the Spirit, had moved, right? And they were all filled, the Bible said, with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. What happened? These people's lives were changed, radically saved. And they, they at that moment, put their faith and trust in Christ And they were reliant and yielded to the Spirit of Christ. And what happened? Incredible things, miraculous things. Yes. Amazing. Thousands of people were saved. Yes. Incredible. What did it come from? People were realizing that without Christ, they were dead in their sins and that they needed Jesus. And once they recognized that and received him, Christ did all the work but they had to yield themselves, and that's exactly what they did. In the next lesson, which is going to be regarding stage number six, we will cover six and seven, the last two stages of spiritual growth towards intimacy and a relationship with God. But at this point, let me close today with asking you a couple of questions. The first one is this. Do you have a hunger for a deeper walk with the Lord? You know, it truly does start there. Do you desire this? Because it starts there. You're honest about it. You truly desire it. And you're not just playing church. You're not just desiring to wear the emblem. Okay. You're not just trying to wear the jewelry of the cross as an adorning piece around your body. You absolutely believe it is your life. And from that, there should be a desire and a hunger. You're you're thirsty for this. And it is what you desire. You want this above everything. Do you desire that? The second question is, as I close with you today, is, Do you now have a clearer awareness of where you are spiritually or even where you have been in your spiritual walk? If not, maybe you need to do a little bit more introspective look at yourself, a little bit more honesty with the Lord, because when we get to God's Word and we look at it, the Bible says that the Word of God is able to divide and cut and be able to get to the bones, the even in the joints and marrow. It gets right to the heart of the matter. And most certainly all of us, yes, you and me, can see areas and should see areas in our life where we haven't been that obedient or living for the Lord as we should be. And that is the awareness. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. And you desire to change and grow. That's healthy, my friend. Are you willing to do what it takes to prepare your heart for the next stages of growth that the Lord has for you? Look, don't give up. 
press on, keep going. The presence and the power of God are worth any struggle. They're worth any frustration. Paul said to know the sufferings of Christ, to be acquainted with that, to know them and the power of his resurrection. He he says to know them and to be acquainted with that. He says, if it's not the Lord's will for me just to be delivered from everything, every trial and suffering and persecution and problem, he said, it's okay. Because I'd rather be acquainted with the power and the presence of God in my life. And so I'm telling you, my friend, anything that you're experiencing going through that's very difficult, you keep going, you keep pressing forward to learn and grow in Christ and have a deeper relationship with God because it's worth it. It's worth the restlessness. It's worth the frustration. It's worth, okay, the struggle and the hurt and the pain that maybe even you are experiencing right now. Because it's worth that as we experience a closer relationship with Jesus. What ways are you feeling challenged right now? Yes, as we look through these stages of growth, I most certainly hope that you're not at the stage of unbelief. I hope that you've put your faith and trust in Christ. And if not, you can do that today. You can give your life and heart to Jesus. You can just acknowledge that you're a sinner, he's a savior, and you believe that, and you put your faith and trust in him as your only hope to heaven. And you know what God will do? Because he's faithful, he will forgive you. If you ask God to forgive you of all your sins, yep, all your sins. See, pastor, I have to name them all. You, you can't name them all because you, haven't, you won't remember them all. But Lord, forgive me for all my sins. I've disobeyed you. But I recognize that without you, I die a spiritual death. But I want to have spiritual life. And I know that through you, because Jesus said in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father, God, but by me, through me, Jesus said. I recognize, Jesus, you're the only way. So I trust and pray that you are past stage one and that you're in stage two of salvation, but you, that you have developed, though, and you've left that stage, and you are now serving the Lord, not because you have to, because you want to, and you're doing it out of gratefulness and thankfulness for all that he's done for you, and that, yes, you recognize that even through this, You experience frustration through inadequacies. That's okay. And that's good because it's a good awareness for us to realize that we can't do it on our own. We need Jesus. That you're at the fifth stage and that you recognize that, that you're spiritually dependent upon Christ. So what am I asking? What am I saying? Depend on the Lord. Rest and abide in him. He is our sufficiency. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me, whether it's on Facebook Live or maybe through the podcast. Thanks for listening in. As always, you are loved and you are prayed for. God bless you. Can't wait to be with you again. Take care.